So welcome everyone and thanks again for joining us for our We Are Family event brought to you today by the UC Merced admissions team. We are bringing together the UC Merced Black community today. My name is Mariah and I am the South Valley Admissions Transfer Advisor for the Office of Admissions here at UC Merced. As a fun fact, I am a UC Merced alum receiving my bachelor's degree in psychology. I transferred to the UC a few years back from Los Angeles Pierce College, so I'm really excited to be able to share more about UC Merced with you today. I will be co-presenting with my colleague, Tim, who I will pass the mic so that he may introduce himself. Greetings, everyone, and welcome. We're so delighted to have you with us this evening. My name is Tim Ford, and I serve as the Northern California Admissions Advisor for the Office of Admissions here at UC Merced. I'm a proud alum of the UC system, having received my bachelor's degree in theater and dance from UC San Diego. Alongside dancing for such companies as Little Washington Dance Theater and Jazz Antiqua Dance and Music Ensemble based in Los Angeles, I have worked in higher education for many years with a variety of institutions and have been here at UC Merced for over four years. A little bit about myself. As I mentioned, we are excited to have you here with us this evening and you are in for a treat this evening as we launch our Become a Bobcat series. And to kick off this evening's event, we have a dynamic individual to share words of wisdom of what defines success here at UC Merced. Dr. Jonathan Grady serves as our Associate Vice Chancellor and Dean of Students here at UC Merced. Dr. Grady is known for promoting excellence in all that he does and creates critical pedagogical practices and strategies that question current norms and practices and seeks to empower and uplift students and their communities. So with that said, I'd like to welcome our Associate Vice Chancellor and Dean of Students, Dr. Jonathan Grady. Good evening, everyone. And I first and foremost wanna welcome everyone today and, and thank our admissions team for putting together this amazing event. I'm so excited uh, to be here with you all today as we talk about We Are Family, bringing together UC Merced's Black community for student success. As mentioned, as the Associate Vice Chancellor and Dean of Students here at UC Merced, I thank you all for being here and I dedicate this moment to all of us who value, fight for, stand with, and celebrate Black lives and Black excellence. As we look around the world today, widespread systemic racism is more present than ever. While trauma, violence, modern day enslavement and oppression live on and through our bodies, attempting to limit our experiences, our connections, our choices, our successes, and our peace. As Black people, however, we have had to resist and persist through crisis time and time again, yet we have survived. We have proven that despite any situation, we will rise like the Egyptian phoenix from its own ashes, renewed and strengthened. So as I reflect on bringing together UC Merced's Black community for student success, I always say that love, accountability, equity, and justice must always inform how we show up each and every day to support our Black scholars and their families and supporters. As we collectively think about the success of our Black scholars at UC Merced, I do wanna share with you all some amazing initiatives, many in which are new and uh, resources for our Black scholars that continue to grow. It is important to note that our Black scholars at UC Merced have some of the highest retention and graduation rates. I'll say that again. Our Black scholars at UC Merced have some of the highest retention and graduation rates. We're brilliant. They're brilliant. There is a Black Student Resource and Retention Center that is being expanded. We have Afro Hall, an identity-based living learning community focused on Black student success. We have a new UC Merced Black Alliance, which brings together Black students, staff, and faculty for advocacy. We have a new Black Research Fellowship Program that focuses on the creation of projects that demonstrate a commitment and ability to advance racial justice and Black liberation at UC Merced. We also have over eight Black clubs and organizations that make up our Pan-African Council. 
In addition to that, we have a student-led Black book, and I'll put that link in the chat box, but this is a website that students created really highlighting not only our Black clubs and organizations, but Black faculty and staff on campus, courses that are taught by Black faculty, and this continues to be a valuable resource for our scholars. And then lastly, the university is currently working to develop a university-wide initiative around Black thrive, the ability for our Black scholars to thrive. And this initiative will respond to anti-Blackness and really ensure that moving forward, our campus really looks at ways to, to fund and sustain efforts to ensure that Black students continue to succeed at UC Merced. Despite all of these amazing initiatives, there is much work to be done and the marathon definitely continues. Therefore, in order for all of us to continue progressing and succeeding as Black people, we must continue loving and supporting one another. And we must continue dismantling structures and systems that have been inflicted upon us to silence us, to break our spirit and to kill our joy. Bell Hooks reminds us that love liberates and is a practice of freedom. Thus, wherever life takes you on the next part of your journey, I hope you all always hold on to the following values that contribute to our success. Values that continue to be proven methods for our success and progression. The first, honor. We must always honor our ancestors and remember our history, for there is no more powerful force than a people steeped in its history, and there is no higher cause than honoring and owning our story and struggle as relics of our growth and ability to endure. We stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. I posed this question the other day, that as we think about all that we're going through in this world as Black people, how did our ancestors survive and thrive and take care of themselves and each other? We are the product of their scars, sacrifices, and sheer, sheer determination. And as James Baldwin reminds us, our crown has already been purchased by our ancestors. All we must do is wear it and wear it unapologetically. Today and always, I honor and thank our ancestors and I thank all of our supporters here today who stand with our Black scholars. The next being voice. It remains your responsibility, our responsibility to show up each and every day to use our voices for good. Silence, indifference, and neutrality always benefits the side of the oppressor, never the oppressed. We must never lose sight of the power of our voices as a way of refuting systems of oppression by laying siege to it, by depriving it of oxygen and shaming it with our art, our music, our literature, our stubbornness, our joy, our brilliance, and our sheer relentlessness. And our ability to tell our own stories, stories that are different from the ones we've been brainwashed to believe. However, we must always remember what act actor Jesse Williams reminded us one day that, and I quote, the burden of the brutalized is not, and I'll repeat that, is not to comfort the bystander. If you are critical of, have no interest in, or are against the success and advancement of Black people, sit down, stop, and silence yourself." End quote. The next, vulnerability. We own the power in our vulnerability by demanding that people see us as worthy of life, as fully human, as enraged at the injustice of the oppressive conditions we have been forced to live under, if we want greater clarity in our purpose and deeper and more meaningful lives, vulnerability must continue to be rooted at our core. Self-love and self-care. 
loving and caring for ourselves amidst the daily onslaught of disparaging and hateful messages and images is a radical act. You see, <laughs> the real project of hatred is denouncing someone's origin, their truth, their culture, their majesty, until they too believe the lies that have been told, in effect attempting to render them incapable of aspirations of freedom. This becomes an uphill battle to love oneself and to care for oneself. As a result, many of us have been forged in the crucibles of difference for too long and have had to stand alone, speak up alone, unpopular at times. We have had to demand our own seat at the table or create a new seat and a new table for ourselves and for others. We have, as Black people, the inherent right to access healing and to be free of institutions and systems that explicitly and implicitly harm and undermine our capacity to live with our full humanity, connection, and purpose. In order to care for the humanity of others, we must love ourselves enough to nurture our own. And the last value that I'll mention, family. Never forget that we are a chosen family. And while families bicker and argue and disagree at times, a family is rooted in love and connected through a shared vision of success for all. Never forget that. And never forget that your family is there for you. In times when people try to imprison and shackle you with their thoughts, their words, their bureaucratic systems, their hands, and their glares. But let me tell you, they will never know our collective strength and magic, for we are a family and a people who come from a lineage of kings and queens who have equipped us with the armor needed to not only survive, but to also thrive. Many may take our brilliance for granted, but one day they will realize that with a fire that burns inside us all, we will continue fighting with our chosen family by our side until our last breath, ensuring that our liberation prevails. In conclusion, to all my people who value and support Black lives and Black excellence, may you always remember that you are enough, that your needs matter, that your life matters, that you must give yourself the love you often dream of receiving from others. And as we all continue the fight for our liberation and our freedom, may you remember that you are beautiful, intelligent, and powerful, powerful beings that can and will continue to revolutionize the, wor the world around you. You are unbreakable. If we remain united together and truth by truth, the change we seek will lie within us. We have the power to demand and to ensure that tomorrow is more equitable, just, and inclusive for Black people. Anything less than that is unacceptable. Thank you all for being here today. And I hope you all leave this evening knowing that UC Mer at UC Merced, we see you, we hear you, we support you, we love you, for we are a family. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Grady, for those important words and reminders of what brings us together as a community and what keeps us strong. So we thank you so much for those inspirational words that you share with us this evening. Thank you, thank you so much for that. So next up, we have another dynamic speaker joining us, Dr. Mariana Harris. Uh, Dr. Mariana Harris oversees our teacher preparation program here at UC Merced, which prepares single subject and multiple subject candidates for preliminary teaching credential um, upon graduating from UC Merced. She is a lifelong learner and an advocate for 21st century culturally re re relevant teaching. And Dr. Harris is quite passionate about preparing teachers to meet the diverse student population in the Central Valley and the state of California as a whole. 
She has a strong passion for working with students and it's my honor to also bring to the platform this evening, Dr. Mariana Harris. Thank you so much, Timothy. Thank you, admissions, for inviting me today. And boy, Dr. Grady always inspires me, and he also gives a lot of hope. And so thank you, Dr. Grady, for those great words of empowerment. Let me just say greetings to everyone and happy Black History Month. Um, I'm so proud as an educator that that's what we do. So we take this month to acknowledge and uh, give praise to those who have come before us and the legacy that they have left. So let me say something to our audience out there about the Central Valley and what it holds dear as far as Black history. I mean, did you know, did you know that Yosemite National Park was protected by the Buffalo Soldiers? 500 Buffalo Soldiers protected Yosemite National Park. And we have a ranger there to this day, Dr. I mean, Ranger Shelton Johnson, who literally protects the legacy that was left behind by the Buffalo Soldiers by telling their story. Because many people who visit the park don't know that those black soldiers protected the park. Also, Allensworth. Did you know that there was a black township called Allensworth in the Central Valley? Colonel Allensworth settled this Allensworth town with all black families who came to the Central Valley for opportunity, leaving their Southern roots to come and, and lay stakes and build their own economy. It was very important to them to be able to have the kind of freedom and the self-preservation and to be able to take care of their families in a matter that would give them respect for the future. I was lucky enough to have a sorority sister who was raised in Allensworth and would tell the stories of how fondly she looked back on her experience to have black educators in her life and to have a black township that valued her and gave her the strength to be able to grow up as a strong black woman. So let me say that we all know, and hopefully you know, that uh, farming was not new to black people. We had lots of black farmers that were in the Central Valley. Many of them came to escape the segregated South and Jim Crow. So those are the kinds of things that we do in K through 12 to make sure that our students know that black history is American history and that this is something that all people should be capable of learning and it should be open to all students in our schools. So I'm very proud to uh, be the leader of the teacher preparation program here in Merced. And we value our multiple subject and single subject candidates who literally we have, we're a new program. We have 27 graduates out of the 27, 24 are working in schools in the area. So we're very, very proud of that. And we're leaving a legacy in the Central Valley that's gonna change the look of what K through 12 looks like. But let me talk a little bit about my relationship with UC Merced. I'm very, very proud to be the wife of a professor in uh, management and economics, uh, business management and economics at UC Merced. And he should be coming in the room shortly. I'd like to introduce him to you. And I also have a son who's a graduate of UC Merced. So you can see I'm a big cheerleader for UC Merced. So I'm happy to be there. I was involved in the recruitment of black students for a number of years and currently overseeing the education programs at UC Merced Extension. So the legacy of black students at UC Merced is all the more makes me proud because for some of the students that are there, I saw those students transition into UC Merced. And so I wanna leave you with some things to think about as you are coming to UC Merced. First of all, you need to know that there are so many possibilities at UC Merced. The world is your oyster there. There are so many things that you're gonna learn from many people, so many things that you thought you knew but didn't know, and you're gonna gain that new knowledge and new exposure. That's so important as you embrace 
higher education at UC Merced. Get to know the physical location. We've had a 2020 plan that has grown the physical plant of our university and you need to be able to visit and go in and out of buildings to get a sense of pride of where we are, that we're the newest UC in the University of California system. You need to get to know what is available to you. It's okay if you don't know right now, because there's so much available and so much for you to explore that you're gonna find a wealth of things to get involved in. Take classes that not only help you grow, but expand your horizons. Take classes that mean something to you, that you can gain something from. Meet new friends. UC Merced is full of people from not only the Central Valley, but you heard Mariah talk about being from Southern California. We've got Northern California friends. We've got Bay Area friends. We've got people up and down the state of California that come to University of California Merced. You need to also introduce your, yourself to your professors. You need to make sure you extend the hand. You are coming into a university where you need to get to know people and you're gonna be thinking about where's my references gonna come from. And you need to make sure that you talk to professors. You, you meet prof professors in office hours, talk about your plans, ask them about their own backgrounds and how they got to where they are today. All of this is very, very important. And I wanna make sure I leave that with you as someone who has a husband there and a son who transitioned from there. Also get involved in campus life. There's so much to get involved in. Um, Professor Grady mentioned all of the or black organizations. Um, I've been the, um, uh, I've been involved with distinguished ladies. I've been their advisor. And these are wonderful black women from all over the state who come together behind a common goal. So important for you to get to know where you'd like to be professionally in a professional organization. And there are also social organizations. So that's all very important. Come on in, Professor Harris. I have Professor Harris is going to join me. Also, what I want to also leave you with is higher education offers so many opportunities. Be sure and use them, but understand it's all about work as well. There's nothing that's going to be given to you. You're going to have to work for what you want. That's very important. Also, pay attention to the details. There's so many details that people overlook because they're, they're not paying attention. So make sure you're paying attention to those. And one thing my husband always says to me is your out attitude determines your altitude. So come with a positive attitude about learning, about having a growth mindset. All of those things are very important for advancing your program. Be responsible for your self-care. Let us know when you need help. Let us know where you need help and what you need help on. It's very important to speak up and not hold things in. And also find a mentor on campus. Make sure that you're there to find people who will support your program. But let me take some of my time and introduce Professor Mark Harris, who's with Business Management and Economics. Would you please say a few words? This is my family. And I wanted to make sure you were introduced to my family. Hey, everybody. Man, Timothy, it's been a long time, boy. How you doing? You're looking good, man. I want to say hello to everybody, future Bobcats. What an awesome group of students, pre-students. Um, I will tell you how important it is that you're participating in this, uh, this evening. I have students who I have been uh, working with either in my classroom uh, or as my teaching assistants who I met at an event just like this. Timothy was a part of that. Mari was a part of that. We did the um, admit receptions over several years together throughout the entire state. We were in Sacramento. We were in the Bay Area, San Diego at that time, uh, Riverside, Los Angeles, my hometown. And some of the students I met then who were seniors in high school who were on their way to UC Merced, I have now had some, in some cases, two and three and four year relationships with. I started at this event meeting them and getting to know them and giving them a chance to get to know me. So it's very important. I wanna provide real positive reinforcement to uh, the fact that you're here and how important a first step this is in the program. 
the other thing you can tell, my wife just talked about your attitude uh, and your altitude. The most important thing I'll leave you with is, is reinforcing what she just said. You notice uh, on her uh, screenshot, um, she has a very big smile. Uh, it's a, it's mm -hmm. a warm, inviting, wonderful smile. Her bearing is very uh, encouraging and very supportive. And that has helped her move up in various aspects of life, professionally and otherwise. I would suggest to you that when you come to UC Merced, if you decide to grace us by your presence, that you come with a good attitude, that you come with an attitude that's positive, give us a chance to feel your energy and to share with you our energy. That's what this is all about. If you come with the right attitude, oh my gosh, the amazing things you'll be able to accomplish. I can tell you that the students who do best with me and with my colleagues are the ones who come with a good attitude. So keep that in mind when you come. And I can't wait to see you when you come to our campus, uh, whether you take a class from me or not, make sure that you let me know that you're here. Uh, make sure that you let me know that you first met me through this virtual platform. <laughs> and uh, with that said, I'm gonna turn it back over to Dr. Harris. Thank you so much for letting me join you this evening. Thank you so much, yeah. Professor. Since this was all about we are family, I wanted to make sure that you met my family, my best part. And so we're so very proud to be a combination husband and wife at UC Merced. And, you know, we've been known as the mother and fa the father and uh, mother of the Black Student Union. And we're very active. We're there. Our doors are always open. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you so much. And we look forward to meeting you on the campus of the University of California, Merced. Go Bobcats. Thank you so much, Dr. Mari Harris, Professor Mark Harris and Dr. Grady for those wonderful intros and words of encouragement for our students and guests. What a fantastic way to start off this event. Um, we will now shift gears in discussing some of the Black student resources on our campus, as well as some of the student clubs and organizations that you may want to get involved with when you get to our campus um, so that you may feel a sense of community with us. So as you can see, here is a brief overview uh, of the topics and events that we're going to be discussing for the remainder of the night. Um, after going through the short presentation, we'll have a 10 minute break and then we will go ahead and um, hear from our student alum as well as our student panelists. Um, so we wanted to begin by touching on UC Merced's commitment to Black excellence. And as stated in the memorandum, Black lives always matter they matter at UC Merced, they matter across our nation, and they matter around the world. UC Merced is fully committed to working on ending the conditions that create injustice, um, conditions that are leaving our Black community dehumanized and innocent lives taken, the enduring legacy of slavery, segregation, racism, and oppression in America must be confronted and addressed systemically. Remember that this is not a, mo a moment, but rather a movement. Uh, therefore, the university has highlighted immediate short-term and long-term plans to address submitted proposals. Um, if you are interested in viewing the full memorandum, feel free to scan the available QR code that you see on the screen. All right, so this is UC Merced's Black Book. Uh, Dr. Grady did touch a little bit on it, created by members of, our, members of our amazing Black community here at UC Merced. This page contains all of the information about the Black community, as well as the necessary contact information if you have any questions as a prospective Bobcat faculty member or guest on our campus. Um, if you're wanting to join in any of our Black community clubs and organization events, the Black Book uh, homepage contains a calendar for that information, as well as other campus events at the bottom of the homepage. You will also find many tours of the Black community here at UC Merced, where you can learn more about our Black clubs and organizations, their missions and values. If you're wanting to know more about or, or become more familiar with the Black faculty, faculty and staff, excuse me, on campus, including their work here um, and the courses that our Black professors teach, you will also find that information here on the Black Book. You can also find further information about the different um, on-campus and off-campus resources that may be beneficial to you as prospective students. 
All right, so first and foremost, we have AFRO, which stands for Afrikaans for Retention and Outreach, who seek to unite and establish Afrikan community that uh, focuses on academic excellence, community and outreach, and providing <clears throat> a mentoring program that fosters student development through their college experience. In order to promote those skill sets, the AFRO organization is dedicated to providing a living and learning community for Black students that we will hear more about shortly. It is believed that every student is capable of academic success and that every student deserves a safe space to cultivate that success, meanwhile giving back to the community and uplifting one another. So as previously stated, this is the Afro Hall, um, the, living learning and, uh, the living and learning community, which welcomes first year um, and second year students from all cultures who are interested in exploring the African diaspora. The program was established to unite students in the African diaspora to increase the retention and four-year graduation rates through various resources that enhance students' academic success. Afro Hall provides opportunities to participate in mentoring programs, academic workshops, and community outreach. Through this program, members will gain support systems, leadership skills, and an unforgettable living experience. Full participation in this program is designed to launch students towards success both during their collegiate career as well as following graduation. The mentoring program at, um, for AFRO uh, opens up in the fall of each year and signups do begin during Bobcat Day as well as orientation. Once the fall semester begins, students uh, that express interest will be notified uh, with more information via email. There are program requirements to be an Afro Hall resident, so if you are interested in learning more, feel free to scan the QR code at the top um, left corner. So here at UC Merced, um, we have um, almost 200 clubs and organizations. Most student clubs and organizations were started by students themselves when they wanted to connect with people who had similar interests to theirs. This reflects the pioneering spirit here at UC Merced, where you are helping to shape the campus as it grows. And we will go ahead and introduce some of the Black student organizations that we have here on campus at UC Merced, starting with the African Student Union Organization. So this organization was established to provide and foster the awareness and appreciation of the various cultures of the African continent. ASU strives to provide political awareness, cultural awareness, social tolerance, all while promoting academic success. This organization also stems to promote cultural diversity on campus by way of bringing exposure to the African culture. Club members meet every two weeks to catch up, um, to learn and teach each other about the different cultures, receive updates on African news and uh, the happenings of the Black community on campus. They host a variety of campus events, such as the Fall Retreat, which is an educational social two-day, one-night event. Um, ASU members visit the different um, African-centered uh, educational venues that we have here. There is also the Culture Show, um, which is an annual night that many people look forward to each year. It is filled with performances, fashion shows, skits, and much more um, as a depiction to the different cultures in Africa. We could discuss more about the events hosted by ASU, but that would take a little bit of a while. So we'll go ahead and move forward and talk a little bit about the Black Student Union. So here on UC Merced, we have BSU organization, which seeks to establish, um, provide, and foster the awareness and appreciation of the African-American culture and history also while enhancing political awareness, social tolerance, and of course, academic success. Club members focus on and engage in community outreach, academic and social support, volunteering, and community service. BSU also hosts annual events such as the Pajama Jam Party, which is used for fundraising for the organization. There is also the Welcome Black Barbecue to bring together UC Merced's Black student community at the start of each academic year to either reconnect or to get to, new, uh, get to know new Bob, Black Bobcats on our campus. Um, and of course, they also host many more events, as you can see on the slide, and there's much more than that. Um, but we'll go ahead and move forward. 
So for the ladies and women of color on campus, there is a distinguished ladies organization. Dr. Mari Harris said she was a part of this. I myself also was a part of the distinguished ladies organization. Um, and this organization uh, seeks to uplift one another to become successful minority women while positively impacting our campus community. Members are also actively involved in our Merced community while engaging in biweekly meetings, study sessions for academic success and bonding events. Some of their annual events include the, their Paint and Sip Social Gathering and the World AIDS Day. All right, so for those of you who are or intend to major in one of the um, many uh, engineering majors that we have on our campus, we have the National Society of Black Engineers Organization, which seeks to increase the number of culturally responsible Black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact our community. The, this program focuses on academic and professional development, community outreach, volunteering, career fairs, industry tours, and of course, the all-important networking. Some of our annual events hosted by NSBE include their Fall Regional Conference, the National Convention, a Day in Education for Volunteering, and Engineering Week. All right, so for the last Black club and organization, but certainly not the least, we have the STEP team at UC Merced, which is a performance-based organization that believes in academic success, cultural traditions, and physical wellness. STEP provides conditioning and routines for students to express themselves, um, themselves creatively, all while striving to maintain the physical and mental wellness of their members. Members of the STEP team also participate in community outreach, weekly study sessions to enhance academic success, and weekly practices, which are held to prepare for um, future performances. The STEP team has uh, the most service hours out of all of the Black organizations here at UC Merced, and they were presented with the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Award by the Dean of Students Office. They have also performed in collaboration with Dr. Watson, who works with underprivileged youth of color and who also works to actively increase diversity in the education system. A few of the annual events where you may see STEP perform um, include the Welcome Back Block Party, Midnight Madness, the African Student Union Culture Show, Bobcat Day, and the Black Banquet. All right, so here we have an interactive leader development program called BOLD, which, um, in which each workshop builds upon the other to create a universal understanding of leadership, unity, and advocacy from a global sense, but also with specific attention to the Black student community at UC Merced. BOLD creates a space to further develop students' capacity as leaders, empowering them to maintain their authenticity and increase their ability to contribute to unity and leadership here at UC Merced and beyond. Students who identify as Black or within the African diaspora are highly encouraged to register. For those who attend all four sessions, um, you will receive an official certificate, a certificate of completion um, for the, from the Margot F. Souza Student Leadership Center, as well as assistance regarding how they may display this accomplishment on their resume. We're gonna shift gears now at this point and hear from our, our students and those um, the makeup, um, what you see Merced really are. And, and to start that, we're gonna start with one of our alum speakers, Mr. Montel Nawasu. Mr. Wasu is um, just completely uh, grad just recently graduated um, for the class of 2020 and is currently getting his teaching credential from UC Merced as well. And when he's not um, doing homework or reaching his quota for teaching hours, he's enjoying reading, writing, and playing fighting games. So he's going to say a little bit more about that, but he is a graduate from our political science program. Please welcome Mr. Montel Nawasu, our featured alum student highlight speaker. Hi, uh, thank you for the introduction. I appreciate it. So my name is Montel Nuwasu. I, just like what was said, I am a political science major. I am from LA. Um, it's actually a city called Carson. And whenever I tell people I'm actually from LA, actual LA people never let me get away with it. So um, if I don't know you, I'm going to say I'm from LA. But if I do know you, I'm from Carson. Um, I graduated last year spring semester with a political science major. It's a really nice degree, really nice major. 
Um, right now, I'm currently getting my teacher credential, like Mr. Ford suggested. It's really, it's really interesting. I quite enjoy teaching. I was one of those students who didn't really have much of a direction after college. And it was suggested to me that, hey, maybe I should try teaching. And so far, it's been working out really well. I feel as though teaching credentials should be joining the conversation of strenuous postgraduate uh, paths in life. Usually people talk about law school being difficult and medical school being insanity inducing, but I genuinely feel as though getting a teaching credential is quite difficult. It's, it's worthy of the same esteem and, and talk. So it's quite nice when I'm not teaching, when I'm not doing it for the kids and, and whatnot. I am doing a lot of reading. I like anime a lot, manga, I write and I love to play fighting games. So that's me. UC Merced has really treated me well. My dad likes to say that having UC Merced or UC on my degree affords me a certain honor and typically employers like that honor on my degree. And it's, so far it's helped me out. I feel as though his words have, have really proven to be true. So life is good. Life after college is actually quite good. I used to be very angsty about it, but I have direction now and I, I certainly appreciate that. So that's it for me. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Montel, uh, for that insight. Um, and also, Montel, if you wouldn't mind, uh, could you share with us um, how you utilize uh, certain resources at UC Merced um, in terms of helping you with your success and where you are right now as an alum? Sure. Uh, could you speak to that? Yes. Sure, sure. Yeah. So UC Merced has quite a lot of uh, different opportunities for success, really. There's a lot of people to talk to, a lot of different relationships that you can build for success. I remember joining, or I remember attending UC Merced as a freshman. I didn't realize how many doors of opportunity were really available for me. But once I did realize it, I realized that the only difference between having an opportunity and not having an opportunity, that distinction was made by a willingness to just talk to people. So I ended up talking to a lot of people at UC Merced. I ended up joining um, the UC Merced Pre-Law Society, which was really cool. I ended up going on some really neat field trips. I had a lot of opportunities for a law school. I got a really nice law internship from them, which was really cool. I did end up meeting some professors. Professor uh, Harris and Dr. Mara really helped me get into teaching, really. And just talking to them and just establishing myself as a person who didn't really know what to do with my life really opened up a whole bunch of doors for me. So that was awesome. There were a couple other opportunities. Um, User Merced did have a tendency to offer tutoring, for example, with writing. I consider myself a really good writer. However, I'm not perfect, and I, I don't remember what it was called, but there was always readily available assistance when it came to any homework. I remember office hours being quite available. Usually teachers love to talk to their students, so just showing up seems to, to really, it, it helps them feel like they're doing their job, I feel, and I, I like giving that sort of validation, and they, they really validated me too, so it was a really nice relationship I had with a lot of my professors. Honestly, though, if you're, if you're coming to UC Merced, I strongly suggest you talk to your professors. It is a reasonably small campus, so chances are you're going to be able to catch them, right? You're going to have time. They're going to have time for you. You're going to have time for them. It's, it's going to be great. And I remember I got my first job from UC Merced as well. Honestly, wow, all these memories are coming back to me. I feel like it's been a while, but I got my first job from UC Merced, and it was a conference, conference and event services. So it's basically like hotel services, essentially. And I learned a lot. I used some of my employers as references. I met a lot of good people from them. And UC Merced has really served me well. So if you're coming here, there are so many people, so many kinds of people, so many different organizations and just individuals you can build relationships with. And those relationships will serve you well. They have served me incredibly well, incredibly well. So I'm excited for you. <laughs> it, it'll be a good time. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I have another question for you. Um, as your bio indicates, um, when you're not, you know, trying to reach your quotas for your teaching hours, you're reading, you're writing, you're playing fighting games and so on. Mm -hmm. um, how do you balance your time? How do you um, incorporate time management and how did you um, develop that at UC Merced um, for in terms of um, navigating and mechanisms that you utilize as a student? and how that's now carrying over into the credential program. Just speak to that a little bit about Sure, that? sure. So admittedly, my time management skills were, were I, inadequate for, for starters, really. I didn't have very good time management skills at first. 
And I, I'd like to admit that it's still a work in progress, but I have gotten progressively better at them. And I, I, I would say it's really started with getting a job. Once you get a job, for me anyways, I realized that there was only so much energy in a day, right? I would get home just exhausted. So um, I learned that if I wanted to get enough sleep, I had to do my homework on time. So it just became a matter of, of necessity, really, of prioritizing my energy and really trying to make sure that I wasn't stressed when I could have just completely avoided it by doing things on time, by taking care of things. When they occurred, I could have more energy for the things that I enjoy, like fighting games, reading, writing, just things that I would rather be doing. If, if I wanted to prioritize that, then I had to prioritize my time. And I can do that by, I use Google Calendar a lot. I, I just schedule out everything and it, it helps, it helps quite a bit. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing information with us. And then um, one other question I have for you in terms of, um, and I think you may touch upon this a little bit beforehand, but you can also go a little bit more deeper. Um, no worries. What, why UC Merced? What attracted you to Merced um, in the first place? Um, how did you find out about UC Merced? And um, how did you come about choosing UC Merced? Yes. Yeah. Let's see your four year degree. Yeah, so I remember being one of those high school students who, my my parents really encouraged me to get a, a a college degree. So in other words, they told me I had no choice. Otherwise, they're gonna kick me out, right? So, uh, I I signed up for a lot of colleges. I, I applied for a lot of different universities. I remember quite a few Cal States accepted me, and I, I think I got into quite a like a couple of different UCs as well. But I think that really I'm a really simple guy, and the thing that really sold me on attending UC Merced was just coming here for I think it was Bobcat Day. It was one of those events that the university holds before the semester starts for prospective students. And I, I visited the school and something about the ambience of UC Merced really sold me. And the, like I said, I'm a very simple guy. When I came here, right, and I saw the students just walking up the hill and I saw the, the trees and the, 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 the water, it just, I don't, it just sold me. It just, it really sold me. It just felt very natural. It wasn't too big where I felt like my identity as a student as a human being was was dismissed and it wasn't too small either it just felt perfect and I, I always really loved that that feeling of feeling like my presence meant something and that's something that you seem said really really sold on me the second I set foot on the canvas wonderful and you're staying at UC Merced for your credential. Program. Yeah, I'm still here. So <laughs> you're still here. Yeah. <laughs> so it really had a reflection on you. Um, you know, we talk about building community and that we are family. And you know, family also encompasses the neighborhoods that rich are surrounding. And with UC Merced being in Merced, how have you incorporated um, your involvement as a student at UC Merced with the Merced community at large? Have there been opportunities for you to engage um, in any capacity uh, with Merced as a city? aside from your studies on the university's campus? And that's okay, if not, that's not the case, but- Yeah, uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to think, but to be honest, I wasn't the most involved student. I, I remember I did get a job and I did join a fraternity my last semester, which may or may not have, have been advised, but I probably should have joined earlier, but um, I mean, there are always opportunities to really engage with the city, to engage with communities that were helping out the city, but I just, for one reason or another chose not to, right? I was always predisposed towards being on my own, I suppose, but I know the opportunities were readily available for sure. Awesome, awesome. Well, we wanna congratulate you on your studies. Uh, you see Merced, your, um, your graduation recently and just your continual success. And thank you so much for sharing your insight and your experiences of where you are right now. We only wish you the best and you pretty much have already um, ignited that fire already in your studies. That's only gonna continue to grow. So we wanna wish you all the best and thank you so much uh, for being our students highlight spotlight speaker this evening um, and sharing your insight on student success. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much. And so now we're gonna also now welcome our student panelists. And when I remind you, if you have any questions to pose to either Mr. Montel, as well as our current student panelists, uh, feel free to utilize the Q&A feature um, here in the um, webinar to ask your questions. 
Um, and we will definitely make sure those questions are addressed um, to our student panel. So I'd like to uh, welcome our student panelists. Um, we have Mr. Donald Carter, Tamita Nesbitt, Kayla Gidden, and Mr. Prophet Olodogan. So if you each wouldn't mind um, introducing yourselves and in doing so, please share with us again, your name, your hometown, your major, um, UC Merced, your class standing, uh, what year you are, and also if you could share with us two to four campus involvement, whether it's organizations that you're a part of um, or something that you may have um, maybe found on our organization, projects you've worked on, uh, share with us anywhere from two to four of those. And I'd like to start it off with Mr. Donald Carter. Uh, all right. Um, first off, if I would have knew that these are just going to sit up here, these headshots, I would have chose a different one. But um, now, nah, seriously, my name is Donald Carter. I am from Sacramento, California, so I'm not too far from Merced. Uh, my major, I'm a double major in sociology and critical race and ethnic studies. Um, I'm a fourth year. I will be graduating in the summer, July 2nd. Got it in my mind. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, and then uh, my campus involvements, um, I would say the ones that I'm really proud of, first, we'll start off with uh, the Brown Youth Academy internship that I did with Dr. Mariana Harris, not once, but actually twice. I've done it as like a regular student lead, and then I did it as the head student lead, and it was just really good for providing me that professional experience as far as an internship, as well as just doing something that I love, which was giving back to children. Um, the second one would probably be, it's a failure, but I love doing it. Um, I was in the process of bringing the Divine Nine, which is a group of nine historically African-American fraternities and sororities here on campus. Um, it was a failed experiment, but I did learn a lot. Um, I do believe that the girls were able to get one on campus and then something happened. I'm not too sure what the specifics on that, but it was, it was a great experiment for just trying to bring another, as you guys can see, an organization for people, uh, for black people on campus. And then my last involvement, I would probably say back when I was a tour guide was um, just doing a panel just like this um, for incoming students, because it's really, good for people to see somebody that they can relate to up there giving them the experience or the knowledge or just providing information that you might not have known or you might not have asked for because i remember being a freshman and the only one that had all the questions was my mom but you got to remember your mom is not going to be there so things like this are really good for giving you that information that you might not have thought of at the time and um yeah that's it for me hi my name is uh, Jamina Nesbitt, as you can see from Minifee, political science and Spanish. Um, I was involved in Black Student Union, um, Merced pre Law Society, ACNXO, and UC Center Sacramento. I guess I'll just kind of expand on why I chose UC Merced since the description's a little short. Um, <clears throat> I did like that the campus was definitely newer and I knew I was going to be a pioneering student. So I did see that as kind of like an advantage and something that would benefit me in the long run, which I still believe it does. Um, it was close enough to my family, but far enough to where they couldn't see me every single day. Um, I do live in Menifee, so the closest you see, I believe is you see Riverside. And I liked how uh, Merced was close to the Bay Area. I do have family in the Bay that I visit often. So it was good to um, be surrounded with family. I can say that um, UC Merced is definitely a school where I felt welcomed. I remember going to Bobcat Day and um, right then and there, I just, I can definitely piggyback off of Monto. The, um, the energy was right. And I just felt welcome right away. I just felt like this is somewhere where I can see myself growing. I can see myself going here and um, really expanding my horizons. And I liked that the school was new. It was something 
that was just kind of out of the blue. I've never even heard of Merced, didn't even really think about it like that. So when it was time to choose a school, I also got um, accepted to a few Cal States and um, maybe like two other UCs. However, Merced did really stand out to me because it was so diverse, it was so different. It was so new. So I really was just looking forward to that. Thank you. Jamina, uh, Kayla. Hi, everyone. Um, I want to say thank you for joining in with us tonight. Um, I'm glad to see so many participants. Um, but my name is Kayla Gooden. I am a fourth year psychology major here at the UC. Um, I am originally from South Central Los Angeles. And I am a student ambassador here um, for the admissions office. And I've also been involved with the Black Student Union. I held an executive board. Um, I was an executive board member for the um, club. And I chose UC Merced very similar to Jamina because it was far away from my family, but close enough to get to them when I wanted to uh, see them because I'm very family oriented. Um, and I also chose UC Merced because they allowed me to be able to leave in May um, with very minimal um, loans for school. So I'm very happy to say that I'm very proud of that. Um, I'm glad I chose UC Merced, um, not only because of my loan situation, but because um, being a student ambassador and being in the Black Student Union helped me figure out what I want to do after undergrad and what I'm going to go to graduate school for, um, which is to start my own, have my own psycho uh, psychological services um, practice, my own private practice here in South Central Los Angeles for low income families, um, Black students, minority students, um, fam other families, anyone basically in South Central low income communities. So very nice to meet you all or see you all. Thank you, Kayla. And Prophet. What's good, everybody? Um, my full name is Olubanji Ladokun, um, but I go by Prophet. I'm from San Valley, California. I probably haven't heard of that. It's like in the middle of LA and nowhere. Um, but I am a third year psych major um, and I'm graduating next year because I'm a third year. Uh, I'm the current president of the African Student Union um, as well as I've helped out with Afro. Um, I've been the lead scholar last year and I'm their current den assistant. Um, basically like the virtual RA. Uh, and like Mariah said, we have a culture show that we're very proud of. It's actually happening this Saturday. Um, if you follow us on Twitter, um, Instagram, you can find a link for that. We're dealing with free pair AirPods and Beats. Sorry, just has a plug. Hey, see you quick. But um, why did I choose using Merced? Um, like everyone was really saying, just the vibes were right from from that Bobcat day. Like as soon as I as soon as I touched down, it was just I knew. Um, I actually signed my like SIR and like paid in full. Um, like within. 10, 20 minutes of being on Merced's campus. Um, I just fell in love instantly. Uh, as well as I saw like they were actually committed to being more diverse. I know I saw like pamphlets and um, things on their website about um, how they were the most diverse you see, um, but actually going there in person and seeing that diversity was just, um, it was nice. Uh, but yes, a little about me. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, and thank you all for sharing why you chose UC Merced as well. Um, each of you um, in choosing UC Merced speak to transition. What was that like for you transitioning from your hometown to UC Merced? And how did you navigate that? So if each of you can sort of speak to that um, transitional phase um, that you went through, that'd be great. I can go first. So I went to a reasonably small high school. It was probably like a couple hundred students at most. And transitioning into a college or a university with a couple thousand was a bit of a, it's a bit of a shock. And it, 
like Prophet was saying, this was a very diverse university. So I suppose it was a bit of a culture, a culture shock. There were so many different kinds of people, so many different organizations, so many different potential friends to have been made. It was certainly, I guess I, I tend to get overwhelmed when I have a lot of options, but it's a good thing. It, it was ultimately a really good thing because I met a lot of good people and there was always an opportunity to have interesting conversations with interesting people. So that was really neat. Um, but I, I, I definitely recall being there the first day of school and I was walking around very starry eyed. I was like, well, I have cat dollars. Like I can buy textbooks and beats and electronics. Like it was, it was so amazing, right? Having a sense of financial freedom even, which was really nice. Um, and they had a gym, they had a gym. And I, I recall that distinctly because, you know, when you're in high school, like, what are you doing? Push-ups in your room? Like, there's nothing really you can do to, to really feel and look good, I suppose. And, you know, you go to the gym here for the first time and it's, it's really, it's nice. It's honestly, it was really nice. So I just, I just recall those experiences very dis distinctly. I have one that I always tell, um, but it's a good one. Um, so transitioning for me was actually really difficult for my first month. So for my first month, I was in my room crying, calling back home to my mom, best friend, everybody tells them I'm ready to come home. I'm on the next train smoking. Um, I see nothing but land and cows and I can't handle it. This is different than LA. It was just like a big culture shock for me. So I was feeling really lonely. Um, I didn't really know people. I was supposed to come to UC Merced with my other girl cousin and another friend that I was really close with in high school, but they left me to come by myself, but it's okay. Um, so one thing I always tell prospective students or just students looking into higher education um, period, what helped me was coming out of my, my shell. That's very hard getting out of your comfort zone, but this was, let me tell you what I did. It was very, very weird for me, not a norm. So we have our campus store. There was two girls, Mary and Khadijah. They were sitting at the little table. I didn't know them. I walked up to them and I said, hi, I don't have any friends. Can I sit with you guys? And Fun fact, I just talked to Khadijah earlier. She's my bestie. She, come, she came to see me for my birthday. Uh, we're gonna be lifelong friends. We're gonna take trips together. And I'm very, very, very grateful that I did that because she's a wonderful person to my, that came into my life and I'm very happy to meet her. So what, I, what helped, or I'm sorry, what helped me transition into UC Merced and just being there is getting out of my comfort zone. Um, I made a friend, so there you go. Um, for me, I would say joining Afro definitely helped. Um, they kind of just had resources off the bat to um, help us transition. Uh, we had like weekly study sessions that um, kind of held us accountable um, and helped us actually set time to study. Um, as well as just the e-board members were there to, you know, help to be a question with uh, classes. Um, they actually gave us textbooks that they used the previous year um, or their notes that they used the previous year. It was, it was just a really nice program. Um, I think for me, transition wise, it was a little different because, well, I am an only child. And so leaving from home was very different. And to make matters even not exactly worse, but to make things a little bit more difficult for me, I came to my dorm. I live in Tuolumne and I was supposed to have two other roommates and they did not show up at all. So I had no roommates my first semester. <laughs> so that was different. So what I did to kind of get more acquainted with the campus and with UC Merced itself was talk to my suite mates like across the hall and uh, I started going to BSU events. Um, I think BSU really was something that I easily gravitated to um, because being a Black student, you know, you want to be part of different clubs. Um, I went to a couple Afro meetings, um, Distinguished Ladies, all of those clubs, and um, I can say they're very beneficial, especially for Black students on the East Merced campus, and um, I can't say that it made my transition much easier. 
just like Kayla had mentioned, I also had to come out of my show as well. Um, very similar. I made a friend here, um, Mariah. She's, yeah, there she is. Um, Mariah and I are very good friends. We actually met at the bus stop. And um, it all started when I dropped a, I went to the student store getting a bottle of um, Herbert lemonade, ready to drink it. It was so cold. I was so happy. Strawberry lemonade to go home and my bottle broke at the bus stop and Mariah was kind enough to help me pick it up <laughs> help me pick up the pieces and we actually um were taking the bus to the same place so that's how we became really good friends and so I can't say Houston Merced is a great place to meet lifelong friends you just never know who you're gonna meet and um definitely a great experience and it's very easy to get acquainted with the people on campus because everyone's so friendly and welcoming with open arms and there's a lot of different organizations and clubs anything i can advise all prospective students to get involved see what you like go out there expand your horizon you know get out of your comfort zone and you'll really get to understand that there's other things that you'll be interested in that you maybe didn't think you were before. Okay. Um, everybody pretty much said, was, you know, was already really good um, for me. I came from Sacramento, so it, it's relatively large. And my high school was, it had a lot of people, but um, coming here, it wasn't necessarily too hard for me to transfer. I did go into Afro back in the day, 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 when it was, when it was, um, it was in half dome. It's it's in a different territory now, so I don't really, um, Sam. But um, it was really good, just helping me um integrate into college, getting that feel, understanding like where you go to school at is where you live at. Like that really never really hit me until I got in, onto campus, got into my dorm. It was a quad. I would say that the biggest thing that helped me just get used to it was one stepping out of my comfort zone, like. My um my fellow panelists have said just talking to friends and for me I'm really outgoing so from the rip I made like four or five friends just oh I live here you stay there okay cool well you know and that's how it worked I also um I went to the gym to hoop I I wasn't lifting weights like Montel then so I wasn't doing that but I was just hooping and um that really for me that's a great way to make friends as well and just after having these friends they were really kind enough and the school as well as, as total was really kind with the people as far as showing me where to go um where i could get my food and it and it was just the vibe allowed me to be comfortable enough to ask strangers and that's really the biggest thing like just having that i kind of felt like no matter who i would ask even if i didn't know them they would help me out and that was the biggest part of why I came to UC Merced, but how it also helped me get used to being a college student compared to a high school student. Great, thank you. Similarities, yet yeah, differences as well too. So thank you all for sharing that information with us. Um, so one of the things I'm gonna ask a couple of you, um, could you share with us some of the helpful resources that you utilized while you were in high school that helped you get to UC Merced um, and also to prepare you for the UC system in general? Um, so could you speak to life before UC Merson, how you utilize those mechanisms to get to a UC, what resources did you use? Okay, well, um, so for me, I, um, I kind of relate to not feeling as if I was a part of enough groups in high school. So for me, my biggest backbone was my mother, you know? So she was really adamant about your A through G requirements, what you need to get into college. And she was really big on, um, there's a HBCU uh, college fair, we're gonna go, you're gonna print out um, your academic transcript and you're gonna give it. So stuff, a lot of college fairs, whether it was um, JC's, state colleges or um, universities, I just went to a lot of them and that really kind of molded me into understanding like this is how you can get into it and these are the resources you can reach out to um as well as um my high school teachers they were really good because as you know you can get letters of recommendations and that's exactly what i got so it was talking to these professors going or not professors at the time my teachers going to my teachers going to my counselor talking to them 
finding out the proper resources and channels that can show me the way on how not only to get into college, but how to be successful. I think we get too caught up in that, just trying to reach it. We need to find resources that'll help us be successful as well and get through it and uh, achieve our goals that we, that we have set in our mind for when we do go to college. But yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, I can say things that I did coming out of high school was um, also definitely college expos. I can remember one, the Black College Expo, which took place in LA at the convention center. And I believe there's one in the Bay Area. Um, and I do know you Sumer said attends that now, I believe so. Um, so that was something that definitely helped me and going to the Avid Advisor and just going to um, the teachers that I was um, familiar with had with letters of recommendation or like application help and definitely um, looking over my A through G requirements, my high school counselor. And so things like that. And even those who I knew were in college before me. So like family friends and other folks that I knew and like uh, close friends. So, but I believe that the college expos were definitely very helpful. And some of them even offer scholarships. So I can say just look into any type of scholarship opportunity, even if it's something as simple as stating what your favorite I don't know, write about your favorite book or something. There's always scholarship opportunities out there. I do know that the Black College Expo does offer one every year and they the range is about 250 to $10,000. I could be wrong, but I do know that there's a different range of scholarships. So um, definitely look into college expos, any type of college fair, um, any avid advisor, high school counselor, guidance counselor, all of those are great resources. Thank you, Jamina. That is so important. You know, financial aid doesn't just stop with the federal grants and loans, but there's a lot of private scholarships that are out there. So making sure you are aware of those opportunities by attending these events is crucial and very important. So thank, thank you so much, Jamina, for um, sharing that information. I'd like to ask uh, another question in terms of the thing that we're dealing with this evening. Um, what does community mean to you? Where do you find it at UC Merced? Um, can I have a couple of you speak to community? And this could be pretty much, you know, how do you form a family scenario, a sense of family at UC Merced? I can speak a little bit to this. So I didn't join any of the, like the Black Student Unions or um, any of the organizations for Black people or African people while I was at UC Merced, but I did join a couple of organizations that catered to my interests. And I met a lot of cool people through that and a lot of friends through that. So I remember I joined the, what was it? The writing, the writing club. It, it had to catch your name for sure. It wasn't just writing club, but I joined the writing club and that was really awesome. I met a lot of cool people through that. A lot of friends I'm still friends with to this day. I joined the Smash Clubs. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, the popular Nintendo game, Super Smash Brothers, but that's all they played. And at the time, that's all I played. So I met a lot of really fun and interesting people do that as well. And I value those relationships to this day. So uh, community for me was just looking for people who did the same things as I did. And that's such an easy way to, to, to breach that initial awkwardness that you might feel when you're in college for the first time and not sure about how to go about making friends. Just look for people who do the same thing as you do. And the rest is is history. Most definitely. Thank you so much. I found community in um, the Black Student Union. I, like I said, I was an e-board uh, member um, for the Black Student Union. Uh, just being with them um, every week, it's kind of like you had to. Um, even through, even through other things, you know, that's still a family. That's still the people I went to when I needed something, when something went wrong, or if I had a question about anything on campus um, or classes. And also, I feel as I found a family um, through work. 
so I'm a student ambassador. We, the student ambassadors, we are a little family working together, um, helping others. And we all know that we can reach out to each other no matter what. And we do, we utilize um, having each other as a resource. Um, even our bosses, we reach out to them all the time for things that aren't work related at the time. Even if it's just a question about school or graduate school or letters of recommendation, like I found family and people I can go to and help whenever I possibly need. So that's a good resource, just putting yourself out there in clubs, working, you know, you build a family that's not your actual family, family outside of family. Thank you so much for sharing that information. Um, I do have a question coming in from the chat. Um, what is the social scene like within UC Merced and local city life? What internship opportunities are available during and post-graduation? And also what job opportunities UC Merced offers to help facilitate um, those who wanna pursue um, careers in the tech field? So could you all speak to, um, social scene life within UC Merced as well as Merced in general, and also the yeah. internship opportunities. I can talk a little bit about um, outside of Merced, uh, maybe like in the local city. Um, I don't know if this really qualifies as a social scene, but the actual like people who live in Merced, Mercedians, um, they, they can genuinely or generally be pretty nice. Um, most of them are like, Awesome. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Most of them are actually there to, you know, not there to help you, but they like they are willing to help you. I'm um, like the other day I had to go um, fix my door and I I went to Lowe's and um, a random lady just walked up to me and was like, "What do you need help with?" She didn't even work at the store, but she was just like she just could tell that I was confused and she just helped me out. Um, you know, people are just. It's also hit or miss. Sometimes people won't be like that in the city. But um, for the most part, what I've experienced is um, kindness with people, um, especially the barber, one barber out here that I go to, um, his name is Tone. Uh, he actually almost got certified to be like the barber on campus. But, um, you know, he's really, uh, he tries to be really involved. Um, he, he's a really nice dude. Uh, there was something I was supposed to, oh. Uh, he actually tried to get me hooked up with the local track team um, to be like a coach for the high jump because they just know that like that's what they needed. So if they feel like you can help them too, like they'll they'll definitely ask you um, for your help for your assistance. Um, so yeah, that's that's about like the local life. Thank you, Prophet, for that. Um. If I remember the question, because it was about four of them, <laughs> it was about four. Um, I can attest or I can speak to um, internships or job opportunities on campus and off. So um, I've worked a multitude of jobs by choice. Um, so I've been a tour guide. I've been a, a student assistant for um, the academic advisors. I've worked with Montel for conference and event services. So what you have to understand is the opportunities will always be there. So there's a job website that has all the jobs, not only jobs, but internships that you should check. And um, it's all based upon you. So for me, they generally don't let you work your first semester because you need to understand how college works before you can start worrying about the money and things like that. But once you get to the point when you can, you just need to apply yourself. And that's really all colleges. So I, I remember the question being post-grad as well. It's all about how you apply yourself. You know, if you get the four-year degree, you have the, the versatility to use it the way in which you want to. You have to understand, um, even though you get a degree in a certain field, that doesn't determine your job. You have to still go out there and apply yourself. So even while you're on campus getting your uh, degree, if you want to work, you have to, one, know yourself so time management is really a big thing you have to know if you can handle it and how many hours and things like that they limit you but you still just need to know that for your sake but um once again you just have to check the job 
opportunities. You know, there's always jobs. You can talk to your professors. That's actually how I got my first internship. I had uh, Professor Harris, Mark Harris, as my econ teacher, just talking to him. And then I met Dr. Mari, and she was the one that helped me with that internship. So the opportunities are there. You really just have to apply yourself. And I know that's hard, but you have to step out your comfort zone because at the end of the day, everybody around you is students just like yourself, and they're just as uncomfortable. The people that you call for uh, financial aid, those are students. So it's okay to feel uncomfortable and just remember that you're not the only one out there. And if you can remember that, then you can use that to power yourself to get through the job that you want or get the internship that you're looking for. Thank you. Um, as for me, I can personally speak on internship opportunities during and after um, time at UC Merced. So, since I've been at UC Merced, I was a, was fortunate to hold two internships um, during different semesters. One of them was the UC Center Sacramento. I think it's a um, great program for, it's open to all majors, but it primarily focuses on those who want to be policy makers, focusing on those who want to work in the Capitol or um, want to field in law, anything within public policy. So um, I, was thank I was grateful to be able to hold position with that. And I was lucky enough to land an internship with the um, California Department of Justice. So I did spend a semester in Sacramento. They do housing and all of that. So I stayed in the Sac State dorms and then did um, my internship with the Attorney General's office. And I was actually able to work with um, and Howard alums and UCLA alums. So representing UC Merced was something that was really important to me. And it was a pretty big deal, especially with like someone like the attorney general whom we had the opportunity to um, personally meet face to face and take pictures and all of that. And I ended up being a press intern. And um, I have told other students about this opportunity with UCCS and they've went ahead and done the same thing with um, maybe different shifts within the capital or something very similar. So I can say that that is something to look into and it's a really great program and it does give you class credit just like any other semester. And um, usually it's quarter system because it's a cohort you're in with all the different UCs but with UC Merced being a semester system, those um, quarter credits do transfer into semester credit. So you're getting your internship opportunity and taking class at the same time. Only went to class Wednesday and Friday, the rest was internship. So I can say that was something that was really nice, only going to school twice a week. Assignments weren't, weren't that bad either. So I can say I got a lot out of that internship and there was another one um, as far as internship opportunities some professors may send out emails so i did um, land my second internship with the uc berkeley labor center where i was able to work with directly with labor unions getting folks to unionize with their jobs and that took place over the summer in the bay area so i can't say that was a great opportunity um, and both internships were actually paid so that was something that was that was amazing. So I can't say I'm very grateful and fortunate to hold those positions. And um, Yusin Merced definitely does give um, all students an equal opportunity to get those um, internship opportunities. Thank you so much. Um, I have another question coming in from the chat. Um, is the community surrounding UC Merced also diverse? Kind of like it's not it's not a lot of okay if I was to break it down into like stats um the black population is kind of on the lower rung um uh <laughs> the Hispanic population is um it, it kind of uh I would say it's almost uh as equal as the is the white population um the Asian population is right next to um, the black population so it it's kind of diverse, but it's it's also um, more so Hispanic people and um, white people. But yeah. and one thing to also know about UC Merced, um, it is more rural. 
um, versus um, being an urban campus. Um, you know, all the UC campuses have a certain geographic feel. Um, you're going to find UC campuses that are in larger cities. You're going to find campuses um, that are in more rural settings like Merced. Um, and we're pretty much smack in the heart of the heart of California, the middle of the San Joaquin Valley. And so it's definitely going to have a more rural feel to it. So, thank you for that question. Um, I have a question. Um, what is the best part of being a UC Merced student? Like, what's your most exciting part of being a student at UC Merced? Um, I guess I'll go first with this one. Um, I can say being a UC Merced student has made me feel unique, unique in a way. I feel like I've utilized my resources from UC Merced and became very innovative and be able to represent UC Merced as a whole, not only as an African-American student, but as a UC Merced student. So those are two different minorities right there within itself. So I can say definitely when I go out and speak with other folks and talk about UC Merced, you know, they kind of raise eyebrows like, oh, UC Merced, you know, they hear about it on um, they hear about it from other folks and, you know, with our ratings um, going up over time, I can say I do feel very, I feel fortunate. I feel accomplished to have received my degree from an institution that has been built in the 21st century. I can say it is an eye-opening experience and I'm very grateful to have properly represented myself and been able to transition from this young high schooler to this um, successful young woman who would, who's willing to help others. So I can't say you, Sumer said, has really given me a chance to stand out and really represent. Thank you. I'm gonna also ask, add to this question, um, also in terms of what's the part that you love about UC Merced, the best part of being a student, what's the hardest part about being a student at UC Merced? And um, how do you allevi alleviate those challenges if there are any challenges that you're faced with as being a student? I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say, go ahead, but you, you unmuted, okay. Um, the first thing that came to mind for me was the physical distance between classes. I know that's probably not the answer that um, people are looking for, but sometimes uh, the physical distance between classes can be a bit strenuous, right? It'd be like, I'd really break up into a sweat trying to make it to my next class, depending on where my previous class was. But in terms of difficulty with classrooms, I feel as though that was all on me. I mean, my major is different from other people's. Uh, I know some majors are probably harder for sure, but uh, I, I definitely felt like the resources to succeed were always available for me. And I don't attribute any of my shortcomings to the institution, for example, or my professors, for example. Um, sorry, if I cut anybody off, I did not mean that. Um, the hardest part about being a UC Merced Bobcat, um, I would just say, it's as 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 much of a pro it is as far as it being new that's also a hindrance in in a sense because you have to come and establish things so you have to come and establish um clubs and things of that sort that if you're interested in and are not already here um you just kind of have to figure out and it's, and it's kind of hard because as a community you're trying to establish that image for your school and you want to do your best to do that and you want to um, be a part of that but you also don't know how so for me that was one of the hardest things of coming to this school like I said I didn't participate too much in high school so it was like how can I leave my impact and mark on it and for me it was it was just hard constantly thinking about that but then once you get into the rhythm of just doing what you like from whether it's working or doing community service or um, homework, school, whatever it may be. Once you get into that rhythm, that opens up so many pathways. So just understand that if you're a prospect for UC Merced, it is gonna have its difficulties, but everybody here 
if they didn't already get a degree from here, they're getting one from here. And you can look at that as your inspiration or your relatability into going into this unknown that is, you know, UC Merced, but we're making it known now and we're leaving an image. And as you can see, the school is thriving academically and educationally. So I want the next set of students to be just like that and surpass us and do better than us. So important. Thank you so much for sharing that, for that insight. Um, I have another question in the chat. Um, this question um, is asking, how has Merced helped you all prepare for life post-college? And do you feel that Merced has helped you fulfill your steps that you would like to reach your life's goals? And I know we've kind of touched on this a little bit, but if anyone wants to share additional information with this question? I feel as though Merced has provided many different routes students can take for post-life, post-college life. I think everyone's circumstances are different, but I don't feel as though Merced has uh, come up short in this sort of category, really. I, I, when I was looking for something to do after college, I felt as though the opportunity was in my face. It was right there for me. And I feel like I, it's been a while since I've been on campus, but I genuinely, I usually remembered all sorts of flyers and, and emails and, and sort of, I remember I got to meet up with some uh, career counselors who met up with me, took time out of their day to talk to me about things I can do. And they, they helped me with my resume. They helped me with coming up with a cover letter, helped me with perhaps applying for certain jobs. And they do that for a lot of people. And it's, it's really a, an amazing resource. I genuinely feel as though they want you to succeed after college. And I'm lucky I met some really good people and I'm, I'm doing something that I really enjoy. And I don't think I'd, I'd be living the life I'm living now if not for using Reset. Yeah, just to, oh, go ahead, Kayla. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, just to piggyback off Montel, um, there's always something to do, like on a Thursday, Friday, like they will have workshops, socials, something. Um, they also send out happening emails that kind of, um, they might have career fairs listed in them. Um, the career center is always willing and um, ready to help. Um, as well as your um, counselor is also always willing and ready to help. And there's also student counselors. So you can go and talk to someone who might be going through something or going through the same situation as you, um, which kind of makes it easier because um, they usually have a little more insight um, as to what they're doing and that can help you. But I'll let you take over, Kayla. Just small. Um, I was gonna say that Merced has helped has helped me by its its energy, its its everything, what it presents to me. So what it presents to all of us is it's being new, um, a twenty first century UC, um, just being able to be there and a part of that, and it give us something comfortable, resourceful, um, and somewhere that we're able to grow as it grows. Um, it was almost like no way it could not prepare us for post-college because um, everything it already presents us. So it's just for us to come in and then apply ourselves to what's already here. So that's what I want to say, sorry. Thank you, thank you all. Um, I'm gonna ask a two-part question um what or who was the most helpful to your success at UC Merced and alongside that question how have you utilized support services um, on our campus and what were the outcomes from accessing those resources um, I guess I can answer that. Can you repeat the first sure, part? Sure, absolutely. So the first part is what or who was the most helpful to your success at UC Merced? Okay. Okay, then, so, mm -hmm. yeah. okay so I can say that um, honestly, going to office hours was very helpful. 
Um, I don't know if I meant, I didn't mention this. I am currently in the process of applying to law school and um, getting letters of recommendation is something that is very important. So I can say that going to office hours and getting to know your pro professors a little bit much better is definitely um, a great thing for students to do. Um, I actually was fortunate enough to get about four letters of rec from professors and TAs total. I just wanted to max that. So um, even though the it's like two, that's like required two to three, but I just wanted to get as many as I could, send them out to different schools. Um, so I think that is something that has really helped me just going to office hours in general. And like to let you in on a little secret, one class that I took actually gave extra credit just for even showing up to office hours. So you just never know, like grade changing extra credit, like B plus to a C, I'm sorry, B plus to A minus type extra credit. So I can say that was something that was definitely helpful. Um, another resource that was helpful, um, the Writing Center, I can say when I wanted to write a, an essay or maybe a personal statement for UCCS, I did go to the Writing Center. There was always someone there to help me. Um, well, socially, the clubs that I participated in were um, helpful for me to get to reach out and network to other folks from like different campuses or even like employers. Cause you never know who knows who. Sometimes not what you know, it's who you know. So that was also another thing. Um, and that what was the second part. I'm so sorry. Oh, the second part was share, you know, sharing how you utilize support services and the outcomes from utilizing those support services. Okay, so the outcomes. Well. Yeah. Well, the outcomes of speaking with my professors. Um, some professors I've had more than once. Half of my classes were in a different language, so I can't say that I've seen, I became acquainted with some Spanish professors. Um, two have wrote me, have written me letters of recommendation for law school, so that was something that was very helpful for me. And also um, possible like opportunities as far as like even the internships that I've participated in supervisors from that internship have also written me letters of rec or you know been on the lookout for jobs for me or other opportunities or really gotten me in contact um, I definitely did make sure I never had professor Harris as a professor but I did personally go up to um, professor Harris and Dr. Mari's office to introduce myself because I've been hearing about them for so long and I was like you know what one day I just I'm just gonna go up there and introduce myself and that was definitely out of my comfort zones, but um, doing so really helped. Very nice people. I highly recommend going by there. They're so welcoming and they're, they're really helpful. So that was definitely something that helped me, especially with um, me being a black student and with the black community being so small and uh, at UC Merced. So um, I, think, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to thank you all for your questions that are coming through the chat. Uh, we are getting close to time, so we may not be able to get to all the questions um, this evening, but I want to make sure we do as much as possible. But I do have another question coming in from the chat. Um, how does post-COVID affect the way you see you, the way you see you see Merced? And with COVID, how as an incoming freshman will it change our campus experience with Merced's population being smaller than that of a larger city? So could you all speak to um, what life is currently like during this pandemic as a student and how you're navigating through that and with any advice that you'd like to share with that? I think that if you're, if you're going to school on Zoom, uh, if you're planning on attending university on Zoom, then you'll probably be a little bit disappointed by the experience. I mean, no one really likes to be on Zoom, to be honest. It's Zoom fatigue is very much real. Everyone gets really tired of just looking at a screen all the time. You can probably anticipate that if you plan on attending university here. But I do, I do, uh, I've heard that UC Merced is planning on opening up in the fall, which is good, which is good. So you might not even be able to 
get a, this this diluted university experience, you'd probably be able to experience UC Merced for everything that it has to offer. I haven't been on campus in a while, so I can't really give you what you know the campus experience is right now. But I'm sure some of the under the other people here could. Um, looking at other parts of your question. Anyone else want to share information um, about student life right now? Um, student life, uh, not really on campus, but near campus is um, okay. Uh, they do have the basketball courts open on campus, the outside courts. So um, every like Saturday or so, um, me and a couple of students from the UC um, go and play so you know it's there you can still interact with we play safely you know we play with masks because COVID um we um what, what was I saying so you can still interact with people um however since there is COVID um you can't really walk campus walk around campus um but since you guys are incoming students um I don't think that's going to be much of a hindrance um but yeah You know, we were definitely having um, events, special events that are continuously happening on our campus. Um, just two nights ago, for those of you who may have attended, uh, we had um, Brandon Leak on campus, uh, spoken word um, artist who won America's Got Talent. So we're still bringing that sense of community even during this um, pandemic to give students a sense of community um, at UC Merced. Uh, we've implemented a DEN program where students do meet um, to, um, you know, meet weekly within their cohorts um, to, again, build that sense of community while they're already learning in this particular um, zone right now. So we're definitely, definitely make sure we are implementing ways to make sure that's still intact as a UC Merced student. I'd like to ask if, each of my panelists, if you would, because um, we are getting close to time, what advice would you give to new students? And if you each can just give maybe one or two words of advice, to our incoming students, that would be very helpful. Okay. Um, I would just say believe in yourself. Um, you know, it's really hard to envision the end, but if you believe that you can do it, then you can. I can tell you firsthand that four years ago, Tim came to my school, John F. Kennedy, and talked to us, and it was only six students, and I never kind of imagine that I will be here about to graduate with not one but two two degrees let's talk about it nah but you just honestly have to believe and understand that even if you don't see the vision now it will come as long as you stay true to yourself um, oh. go ahead girl sorry okay I would say two things um step out of your comfort zone and I'm going to tie something next to it and talk to your professors. Talk to your professors. That's something I wish I would have done. So I'm going to give that to you all. I want you all to do what I didn't do to the fullest extent. So talk to all your professors. Uh, make sure they, especially your ma major professors. So whatever your uh, major is, you know, make sure you try your hardest to get to know them. Um, and then the second thing is just be positive. That'll take you a long way. Be positive with everything, your schooling, um, whatever you got going on, things that's hindering you. Just try and look at the positive side and be great. Um, definitely piggybacking off of both of both of them. Um, be positive and really just honestly, you do have to really believe in yourself. I'm not gonna lie, I did not know, I knew nothing about attorney general's office. I am no attorney attorney general was and then like months later he's like calling me by my first name like hey Jamie, what do you think about this that's crazy so you really just have to apply yourself and just be confident in yourself because I did have imposter syndrome working alongside of um, Harvard and UCLA alums I did feel like whoa but I was there I was still there so that goes to show that, hey, I do belong here. You know, I did work hard just as, just as much as everyone else. So definitely like have a lot of self-confidence and like just push yourself and just, um, yeah. And another one is go to office hours. I'm telling you those office hours will do it for you. Once you and your professor get an understanding, 
I think that is um, something that just lays the foundation for your entire semester. So um, definitely go to office hours and push yourself, like boost your self-esteem, have confidence in yourself and really just put yourself out there. You know, you, it's, it's, it's gonna get uncomfortable at times, but in the long run, it's gonna be worth it. I promise you. One thing I will say is take um, Professor Harris's Econ 5 class. Um, it was amazing. Dude made me some money like the first three weeks of that class. Phenomenal. Um, and he does a really good job covering it. Um, and he gives you ways to like, not even pass, to not even take the final. Like he said, if you do a certain amount of, um, a certain amount of uh, essays based off his recordings that he makes, um, if you go to office hours, I think it was, it's just little things that aren't really that hard to do. You can opt out of taking the final and end the class with an A plus. So he makes it easy on you, um, but he also does expect a lot from you um, with that being said, um, but yeah. All I have to say is to say yes to things, uh, the amount of growth you'll be in store for when you enter university is unlike any other period in your life. Like, I'm only 23 though, what do I know, honestly? But you're, you're, you're gonna change a lot. So just say yes to things, do things, have a bunch of experiences because once you step out of college, there's nothing quite as rich and as, as nothing, not, nothing quite like college, honestly. So just say yes to things, do things, hang out with friends, really, um, Give your soul some food, honestly, because you're not going to get this again. So important. Thank you all for sharing that insight and those, that valuable information with us. And we are, for my adults who are visiting this evening, we are looking forward um, to returning to campus um, in fall 21. We don't have all the details as of yet, but as you may or may not know, we do have the very first um, African-American president of the UC system, Mr. Michael B. Drake, who joined um, the University of California this past July. And what an icon he is. And he did mention um, that we are looking to return to classes in the fall, but again, details to follow. So always stay up on information. We'd like to encourage you to follow us on social media to be up to date with all the happenings that are happening at UC Merced. So I want to thank all of our panelists. I'd like to turn it over to Mariah at this point. Thank you so much, Tim. Um, so now for the closing of this event, on behalf of my colleagues at the University of California Merced, we would like to say thank you to our Black UC Merced family, the students and faculty who participated in this event to share their stories and words of encouragement. We would also like to say thank you to all of the guests who have taken the time to join us tonight for our first event of the Becoming Bobcat becoming a Bobcat series. Um, we hope to see you all in our upcoming events. So please feel free to visit our UC Merced events webpage to see what's next for this student success series. But for now, you all have a fantastic evening.